Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Tamika Simmons. I am Chief Public Relations Officer at Delta Health Center. We are a federally qualified health center, and we've got 18 locations across five counties in the Mississippi Delta. And I am here with our providers who have taken a quick break in between patients so that we can talk very briefly about how you can stay safe and best advocate for your health while we're in the middle of this newest COVID-19 surge. And I have joining me Dr. Ragu and Dr. Blue. Dr. Ragu, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Dr. Simmons. And thank you, Dr. Blue. And thank you to all of you for joining us. I'm a pediatrician here um, at the Delta Health Center. Um, uh, yes, I go by Dr. Ragu, like the pasta sauce. I see kids up to from newborn babies um, all, all the way up to age 22. And so uh, thank you for uh, having me join here. And I'll, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Dr. Blue, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, I'm Dr. Blue. I am from the Mississippi Delta. I'm actually from Greenville, Mississippi. And I also practice at Delta Health Center. I'm a family medicine physician. Um, and I'm also the medical director here. So glad to be with you all today. Thank you guys so much. And I know you're pressed for time. So give us some re a really quick rundown. And Dr. Ragu, I'll start with you. What are the top three things that families need to know about how to best protect their children while we're in the midst of this newest surge of COVID-19? Thank you so much, Dr. Simmons. First of all, let me start with an analogy because I feel like, uh, you know, uh, just painting a picture really helps. Um, uh, a lot of my uh, patients uh, are active in sports and, uh, you know, soccer is, is a, a very popular, uh, you know, sport that a lot of kids play. And a question I always ask my kids, and I share this with all my families who, who are watching this, they, they know I bring this up in, in the room with them. I always ask, when you're playing soccer, who's the person that's guarding the goal? And, uh, uh, you know, everyone knows it's the goalie is guarding the goal. Now, a question I want you to really think about is would we ever play soccer without our goalie? The answer is no. We know the score would be 300 to zero, right? And so, you know, it's so important to have a goalie when you're playing soccer, you know, every now and then the soccer ball is going to get past the goalie, but it's your best defense and you're not going to play soccer without having a goalie there at the net. And why I share that story is because it's exactly why we all need to make sure for those of us who are eligible that we should be able to get our COVID-19 vaccination. And so it is your goalie. It is your best defense. It is your protection to keep you safe um, against the, the uh, coronavirus. It is safe and effective. Um, and so, uh, you know, the number one thing is right now, all uh, uh, people aged five and up are eligible to get the COVID-19 immunization. And so it's really important that, uh, you know, if you will fall into that, that category, that you uh, go ahead and, and, you know, schedule an appointment right here at the Delta Health Center uh, to, you can get your, uh, your immunization. Um, it is a two dose uh, uh, vaccination series for our kids. And uh, just today we got the um, uh, update from the FDA that our kids age 12 and above are eligible for their booster immunization. So again, that's just getting your goalie to be in the best shape possible to, uh, uh, play for your team, that's team you, to keep you safe and protected. And so I really recommend that um, uh, everybody who's eligible get the vaccine. The main side effects, you can have a little bit of soreness uh, there on your arm at the vaccine site. You can feel a little bit of fever, fatigue, uh, a headache potentially within the first 24 to 48 hours, but it really uh, uh, goes away. And compared to the actual side effects of the real COVID-19, it is much, much less compared to actually having COVID-19. And so I really uh, encourage you, it is, like I said, safe and effective. Our youngest kids, ages 5 through 11, have done so well with the vaccination. I'm so pleased as a pediatrician. It makes me so happy to see how well our kids have been doing that they've gotten both vaccines, our kids, um, uh, you know, before Thanksgiving, even all the kids that we vac uh, vaccinated in the clinic, as well as um, right afterwards through all of December, have just done fantastic, uh, uh, really walking out with thumbs up and high fives, uh, given how well they've done with it. And so I really want to 
reiterate how important it is. So that's the number one thing. The number two thing is really, all, you know, all eligible other family members in the home should get vaccinated to protect our youngest uh, kids who are not yet eligible for the immunization. So I have a, uh, a five-month-old daughter at home. And so I always tell my, my, my patients and families, the best way I can keep my little girl safe is by making sure that I was vaccinated. As, as so is my wife, Dr. Nina Ragu, who's our uh, one of our OBGYN uh, doctors here at the Delta Health Center. That's how we keep our five-month-old daughter safe. Because again, the vaccine is as safe and effective as possible. And they are really crossing the T's and dotting the I's to make sure they have the exact dose and uh, the, the highest safety standards possible to make sure for our youngest uh, kids six months through five years that they get that correct. Uh, and, and so that's why it hasn't been approved yet for, for the, the youngest uh, patients, but we anticipate hopefully uh, in summer 2022, if not later this year, that that will be approved accordingly. But in the meanwhile, while we wait for that, the best way to keep our babies and our little ones safe who are under five is for everybody else in the home to be vaccinated who is eligible to be vaccinated. And so the last thing I will mention, number three, is that it's important to uh, um, uh, you know, wear your mask, especially when indoors. Um, I know it's colder right now. And so it's important when we are um, indoors, especially outside of the home in, um, in public spaces that you try to wear your mask uh, all the time uh, to really keep yourself safe. I recommend um, you know, wearing a mask that is going to, you want to make sure it's fitting over the nose um, appropriately. Masks like this um, aren't uh, actually really protecting you as well and, and are also ex potentially exposing others if you um, are sick with COVID-19. But you want to make sure that the mask covers the nose. It's a well-fitting mask. And, uh, uh, you know, if you have a, a, a mask that's like a KN95 or better that can, uh, uh, that is better to protect you against the Omicron variant, but I, I know that that uh, might not always be available. So really the best mask you can find that fits over the nose is really the, the way to keep yourself and your loved ones safe. Thank you, Dr. Simmons. I'll turn it back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ragu. So quick question. When, when families come in for vaccinations, are kids able to get not just the COVID vaccine and the flu vaccine? Because I know it's, we're in the midst of flu season. So are we doing flu vex, flu shots, and COVID shots at the same time? I'm so glad you asked that, Dr. Simmons. Yes, you can get the flu vaccine and the COVID-19 vaccine at the same time. And you're absolutely right. We are seeing cases of flu around all over the country as well. Maybe not as many as we have in, in some previous years, such as 2019 and prior, but we still are seeing it. And they are totally different animals. They play in, 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 in different uh, ballparks, just like soccer is very different from basketball and very different from football. Again, these are different viruses, and so getting your flu vaccine is the, is really important as well. And the best way to you know have your best goalie ready to play uh, and keep you safe. And so I, I do recommend uh, you know getting both. And this and the CDC has blessed uh, that ability for you to get both immunizations at the same time. Perfect. And last question: So when folks come in to have their vaccine, when the kids come in to have their vaccine, you mentioned that there there are two doses. So what's the time frame between those two doses, uh, uh, dose one and dose two? Excellent. Yes, you, it's 21 days apart. And so, um, uh, you know, as soon as you get your first one, you can uh, come back as soon as 21 days. And uh, I know sometimes with everyone's lives and busy schedules, it, it, it doesn't have to be exactly 21 days. So if, if you come in after that time, uh, just coming back and getting that second immunization is, is really important just to really be uh, fully protected. And uh, down the road, we, you know, we may have uh, boosters that are recommended for our, even our youngest group, that five through 11, uh, who's approved. But right now, um, we're, uh, uh, we, we don't have those recommendations that they, they may come down the road. The key, though, is that as of today, the 12 and above have uh, have had that green light. So uh, something to look out for. If you, awesome. It's been Thank over you. six months since your second one. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Dr. Blue, talk to us a little bit about what are your recommendations for folks, for our, our, our adults and our vulnerable populations. What would be your recommendations, again, about staying safe as we're in the midst of this newest COVID-19 surge? Let me just say, um, after that great speak, um, uh, speech by him, it's like I'm not even needed because he answered most of all the questions. That was really, really, really great. Um, I do piggyback off of him saying that um, we do have to push the 
vaccines, vac your vaccines, and make sure. I'm glad you asked that question about getting both at the same um, time because um, making sure that we are protected from all every every way is a great thing to do um, at this point because, like we were saying, flu is definitely. Um, still out there even though you know everyone's focused on COVID and not only that I just wanted to say something that wasn't um that whenever we do test positive it is important because a lot of people love to socialize and it is important that we follow the quarantine um recommendations and making sure that we do frequent hand washing um we still you know sanitize and everything like that because we want to make sure that we're not spreading it to others and even though you are vaccinated does not mean that um we don't have to wear our mask um that we still need to wear our mask because even though we're vaccinated we still can contract the virus even though we may not get as sick but we um still can contract the virus um making sure that we're taking i've been recommending many people take um vitamins and anything we can do to keep, keep our immune system um up so we want to make sure we do that as well okay so um dr blue how should a person know when to go in to see the doctor like what should prompt us to go in to even be tested like i know dr ragu really emphasized vaccines like that's your first you know round of defense but if you feel like you're sick what are some of the symptoms that should indicate that a person really needs to go to be seen to be tested so they'll know what to do next well definitely um especially with this variant that's out most of it is most um so a lot of complaints we have is a congested nose or runny nose or um a cough a dry cough that you're having some people actually have um run a fever or some chest pain of course shortness of breath and high fever definitely go in to get seen about but a lot of people even it's just basically just sinus um issues um that people are actually presenting with so if they're even concerned or say hey maybe i was exposed to someone or you may think that you have it i mean you better be safe than to actually you know have it and spread it to someone else right so then if i am um if I have a pre-existing condition, uh, how concerned should I be around um, staying safe? Let's say I get vaccinated. Let's say I'm wearing my mask. Um, what are there, is there anything else I could or should do in terms of trying to control the environment around me where I can um, in order to stay safe? I know sometimes people have to have conversations with their family members about, hey, you've got to be vaccinated or you've got to be tested before you come in the house or you've got to wear a mask before you come in the house. For people who may be on oxygen or on medication with diabetes or high blood pressure or these other conditions that make them really vulnerable, is there an extra step they can or should take in order to stay safe? Yes, like you were saying, most of the people in this especially even in my situation with my grandmother, we have signs on the door that says you cannot enter without wearing a mask. You know, um, it's also recommended that, you know, you wash your hands or whatever before going inside and limit your um, environment. Like don't go to places with big crowds that you really can't control. Um, that can also help. And especially if you're immunocompromised, um, you want to make sure, like I said, taking all of any kind of immune support that you can actually take. Um, but yes, limiting your the environment, your environment, and taking immune support and wearing your mask and getting you know vaccinated. Okay, so last thing, Doctor Blue, um, I know that as a patient, I Google diagnose myself all the time, and I know doctors <laughs> hate that, right? <laughs> So in order for patients to remain um, uh, aware of what the facts are, where would you recommend that they go if they have a question or a concern about, you know, what's really going on with COVID, what's true, what's not true, where would you suggest that they go to find more information that's factual and reliable? Okay, I know that we here, you know, at Delta Health Center, we do give out fun facts on our um 
websites as well, but they can also go to cdc.gov. You know, they um, have very um, good facts there in the Mississippi. I think that, can you say that one more time for us, Dr. Blue, you kind of cut out a little bit. You said the cdc.gov and what was the other website? Yes, in the Mississippi Department of Health, MSDH um, as well to figure out any uh, facts that's there as well. Okay, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate again, your time and the information. Again, we are the Delta Health Center. We've got 18 locations across five counties in the Mississippi Delta. We are a federally qualified healthcare center and we treat patients regardless of their ability to pay. So don't let finances be a reason for why you don't come in to see the doctor or you don't check in with us. And even if you have adequate insurance, still be in contact with us because you never know when you may not be able to get in with your regular physician or may be able to get on someone else's schedule, come by and see us. Yes, you can see we've got friendly and knowledgeable physicians who are eager and ready to, to help and to serve you. So check us out at deltahealthcenter.org. You can go there for more information or give us a call at 662-741-8800. That's 8800-662-741-8800 or visit us at deltahealthcenter.org. In the meantime, you guys stay safe out there and enjoy your new year.